Haplotypes are a combination of alleles for different polymorphisms that are closely linked on the same chromosome. Polymorphisms are the variant forms of a specific DNA sequence among individuals, which exist in a mostly similar chromosomal DNA sequence. We are, after all, a little different while being much the same. The DNA sequences shown do not show the complementary strand of the double-stranded DNA. Research in DNA has revealed many polymorphic locations across the genome present in humans, as well as other species. And there are databases which keep a record of these which we can refer to. As nucleotide differences occur in both non-coding and coding regions of the DNA sequence, a haplotype may not have genes or may have one or more genes. Generally, determining which allele an individual has for the polymorphisms in the haplotype is by genotyping, that is, defining the nucleotides at the positions known to have variations between individuals. Sequencing or finding the nucleotides at each position along the DNA sequence, though it reveals the genotypes at the polymorphic loci, is less commonly used because it is currently more expensive. In a particular genotype, for example, big A, small a, big B, small b, the alleles present can be combined differently. For instance, the capital A could be linked to the capital B or to the lowercase b, and likewise for the lowercase a. So to determine the haplotypes also requires the linkage phase be known. That is, which alleles of the different polymorphisms are linked in each homologous chromosome. Polymorphisms closely linked on a chromosome, as in haplotypes, unlike polymorphisms far apart on a chromosome or on different chromosomes, do not assort independently in meiosis, and a haplotype is often transmitted to the descendants. Let us look at two completely linked polymorphisms found in coding regions or genes for a mating between a heterozygous and a homozygous recessive individual. Since completely linked polymorphisms will be transmitted to the progeny together, this mating will probably result in an F1 phenotypic ratio of 1 is to 1. However, the linkage phase will determine the phenotypes. For the example shown, in one phase of linkage, the probable ratio is one blood type A with a high chance of cancer to one blood type O with a low probability of cancer. In the other linkage phase, the probable F1 phenotypic ratio is one blood type A with a low chance of cancer to one blood type O with a high likelihood of cancer. However, linkage is not always complete and crossing over can happen in two linked polymorphisms, say genes. If crossing over occurs, the F1 of the mating between a heterozygous and homozygous recessive will probably result in four phenotypes, but more parentals than recombinants. The ratio of the four phenotypes depends on the distance between the two polymorphisms. The closer the two polymorphisms are, the harder for recombination to occur. Very distant markers on the same chromosome, like A and C, often undergo crossing over and so assort independently. Thus, an individual who is a heterozygote for the two markers produces equal frequencies of gametes with different combinations of alleles. And in a mating between a heterozygote for two genes and a homozygous recessive, whether the genes are distantly linked or on different chromosomes, the F1 phenotypic ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 generally results, which is different from the F1 phenotypic ratio for the same cross in linked genes. The transmission of an entire or near entire haplotype over many generations to descendants allows inference of ancestry from haplotypes. Ancestry inferences is hindered in alleles of polymorphisms more distant on a chromosome or on different chromosomes due to the frequent recombination. In the case of haplotypes, you share a haplotype and you share an ancestor. Besides ancestry information, haplotypes can help locate genes carrying information for phenotypes like a disease. 
if polymorphisms or genetic markers of healthy individuals are compared to sick individuals and show an association between the haplotype variations and the disease, the DNA variation or variations are probably near or in the gene responsible for the disease trait. Many, many, many genetic markers across the genome and many, many, many individuals need to be studied to find associations between phenotype and genetic marker or markers to obtain a rough location of the gene causing a particular phenotype. Having obtained the rough location of the gene causing the disease, pinpointing the actual gene causing the disease requires there be more done, such as sequencing the region, predicting genes in that region, and finding which of these possible genes is a gene and causing the disease. But those concepts are covered in other videos on my channel. This video covers the concept of haplotypes and the main points are 1. The haplotype is a combination of alleles from multiple closely linked polymorphic loci that tend to be inherited together. 2. The alleles of the polymorphic loci found in haplotypes are determined by genotyping or sequencing. 3. Having haplotypes in common may mean you share an ancestor. 4. Haplotypes associated with a particular phenotype may help identify the causative gene or genes. To understand better what a haplotype is and how haplotypes are used to locate a gene for a specific phenotype, you should answer the questions that follow, then check your answer against the answers and explanation provided. Question 1. The diagram shows each family member's genetic markers in a chromosomal region associated with a disease phenotype. State the haplotype that carries the allele responsible for the disease in either or both parents, depending on whether the allele causing the disease is dominant or recessive. The solution to this question first depends on determining the mode of inheritance of the disease allele which is recessive from the pedigree diagram showing normal parents having a sick child. Each parent is thus a carrier and the children with the disorder will receive a chromosome with the disease-causing allele from each of the parents. All the children expressing the disease trait must inherit the whole or the section of the haplotype that carries the allele causing the disease from each of the parents. So based on the children with the disease, the markers they share are on the haplotypes GGTT from Mr. Ghazali and AAGC from Mrs. Ghazali. So these are the haplotypes found in the parents carrying the allele which causes the disease. Question 2. Based on the haplotype data, determine the location of the gene causing the disease trait relative to SNPs 1 to 4. To determine the solution to this question, look at children with recombinant haplotypes. Talmi and Aini express the disease and have inherited from their parents one complete and one partial haplotype carrying the allele responsible for the disease. The sections of the partial haplotypes, which are the same as the complete parental haplotype carrying the disease allele, are after SNP1 and before SNP3. Thus, this section of the chromosome must contain the disease-causing allele. Mars, who does not show the disease phenotype, has one complete haplotype that carries the disease-causing allele, but has the region around SNP1 missing from a parental haplotype known to carry the disease allele. So the disease allele carrying region must be between SNP1 and SNP2. Question 3. Hattie's sister Champa intends to marry a man known to be a disease carrier. She wishes to know whether she is a carrier for the disease causing allele and thus whether any of their children may express the disease trait. Is Champa a carrier for the disease causing allele? The answer to this question depends on the chromosomes Champa inherited with respect to the location of SNPs 1 and 2, as this is the location of the disease causing allele. Champa received a non recombinant wild type chromosome from her father, haplotype TCGA. Still, unfortunately, 
the homologous chromosome she inherited from her mother, has the region where the disease-causing allele is located. So she is a carrier. Her children have a chance of expressing the disease phenotype. If this video helped you understand better the concept of haplotypes, give it a thumbs up to like and support the channel and subscribe to receive notifications of other videos on genetic concepts I will be covering. Thank you for your support.